This video covers the third part of the conditional statements review. For number 16, we have consider the following statement, which assigns a value to B1. Boolean B1 equals true and 17 mod 3 is equal to 1. 17 mod 3 equals 2. So 2 equals 1 is a false statement and true and false is a false statement. Which of the following assigns the same value to B2 as the value stored in B1? What we're looking for is another false statement. So for option A, we have false or whatever this is. So 17 mod 3, which we just established is 2, is this is a true statement because 2 equals 2. So here we have false or true. This is a true statement. So that's not the one we want because we're looking for something that is ultimately false. For option B, we have false and again, 17 mod three is two. So two equals two is another true statement. So false and true is a false statement. So B is the option that we want, but let's go through the other options. So for option C, we have true or uh, 17 mod three equals one. So 17 mod three, which we know is two, that's not equal to one. So this statement is false, but that doesn't matter because true or false is a true statement. So we wouldn't take option C. For option D, we have true or false, which evaluates to be a true statement. So true and true is another option that we don't want because it's true. And lastly, we have true and false, which is a false statement or true. So false or true turns out to still be true. So again, B is the correct answer because false and true is a false statement, which is what number 16 was. For number 17, we have int x equals 3, int y equals negative 1, and all right, so let's point out some stuff. When we have if statements, sometimes you see a single if statement enclosed in braces. It is important to count the braces to see where that if statement ends because sometimes we have nested if statements within this. And so we see our if statement, it opens up with, uh, we have an open brace here and it closes right here. So the end of this, any condition tied to this if statement stops right here. The first if statement stops right here. And the second one picks up right where we have this next open brace and it ends right here. So these two operate independently of each other. Um, so like we start this out, we have three, X is three, Y is negative one. So three minus two, that which is uh, one, that's greater than negative one. So three minus two, which equals one, that is greater than y, which is negative one. So because this condition works, we're going to execute what's inside the braces. So we're gonna subtract x and y, but this notation x minus equals y means that uh, we subtract x and y and then replace y with that value, I mean x with that value. So three minus negative one, which is four, becomes the new x value. So three minus negative one is now equal to x. So that tells us that x equals four. When we get to our second if statement, remember x has been updated to be four. And so then for y, we're checking if negative one plus three, which is two, is greater than or equal to four. So because two is not greater than or equal to four, um, this statement inside here does not execute. So this fails, so this does not happen. And so at the end, this, out, this system.out.print statement is outside of this if statement, so it still executes. So we get x equals the current value of x is four and the current value of y is negative one because this statement did not happen. So we're looking for x equals four, y equals negative one. That's going to make D the correct answer.
for number 18. Now, remember I was saying that we have sometimes nested if statements and uh, sometimes we have nested else statements. So if we look at this entire uh, segment of code, we have an if statement followed by an open brace. So this first if statement starts here and it includes everything until we get to uh, another code, two closed braces essentially by each other. So we this if statement opens up another if statement. So this condition is tied to this and this else statement, which is the other condition for this if statement is tied to this as well. well it's tied to this if statement, which is tied to this if statement. So we get open brace, open brace, close brace. So this if statement, this initial, this inner if statement stops here and the else statement stops here and the other if statement stops, the first if statement stops here. So all of this is tied to this first if statement. Now, if we go through this, we get false and true. So when we see a bunch of uh, Boolean values just uh, in a string with no parentheses, like we have parentheses around this, um, I, I, it ultimately won't matter, we'll still get false, but false and true, that is a false statement. And so false or false is going to be false. So this statement, uh, this if statement does not trigger. So because this if statement doesn't trigger, nothing, this if statement doesn't happen, and this else statement more importantly doesn't happen. This else statement is not tied to this if statement, it's tied to the inner if statement. So this else statement is tied to this. So because this statement doesn't happen, nothing inside this brace or this brace happens. So we jump down to this other if statement. So we have if true or true and false. So true and false, this is a false statement, but true or false is true. So this if statement is triggered. And so because it's triggered, whatever happens inside this brace and this brace actually happens. So all we get as an output is Third. For number 19. Now notice we don't have any options here, so the options are on the second page, but let's go through this. So we have int star equals four, int end equals five, boolean keep going equals true. And we have another if statement that contains its own if statement. So our first if statement starts, we'll just put a one beside this for the first if statement. So then the second if statement, it starts here, ends here. It has an else statement that we'll put like 2e and that ends here. So then the other, the first if statement, it ends right here. So if this condition is met, we'll jump inside this uh, other if statement. Let's see what happens. So start is four, end is five. Uh, so we're asking is four less than five. That's true. And keep going is also true. So true and true, this condition triggers. So then, you know what? We'll just put a true beside this. This is a true statement. So what's in here happens. So is end, which is five. So five is greater than zero. So because five is greater than zero, do what's inside these braces. So the value of start is four plus two replace start. Four plus two is six. So start now equals six. And we add one to the value of end, which was five. And so end is also equal to six. This else statement here, this else statement where we add, add, about, add three to the value of end and then replace in, this does not happen. This statement doesn't happen. 
And so now, after all of this, you're out of this if statement that initially started right here. So now remember, start is equal to six and end equals six. So now we're checking is start, which is six, is that less than six? That's a false statement. So, you know, let's group some more uh, braces. So we have open brace, open brace, uh, close brace. And then we have this L statement. So we're going to put like a 2E and... We have a closing brace, we get a 2E. And so then this other if statement finally closes out, we'll put like a 1E right here. Well, one, whatever. So all of this ends from 2 down to 2E only triggers if this initial statement happens. So because the start less than end is false, nothing here happens. So the value of end, which the question is asking, is whatever end was after the end of this first conditional. So we know n should equal six. And so that's going to make B the correct answer. For number 20, uh, we have int x equals seven, int y equals four. Boolean A equals false, Boolean B equals false. So uh, if, well, let's track our open braces again. So we have one open brace, two open braces. We'll say two, you know what? We can use a C for close. This two E that opens and the two E closes. So, so far still inside this uh, second if statement. And then, well, first if statement. So then we get the one closing. So all of this is tied to this first if statement. Uh, if seven is greater than four, that's a true statement. So because seven is greater than four, execute what's next. So then if seven my four, which is three, so is three greater than or equal to three? That's also true. So because this is true, do what's inside this other brace. A equals true. So now we know A has a value of true. And X minus Y, which is seven minus four, that takes over the new value of X. So X is now equal to three. The minus equals Y means we subtract X and Y, replace X with that value. So X is equal to three. This else condition here, not, you know what, does not happen. So now we're out of that if statement and we right now we know A is equal to true. We did not do anything to B. So we know B equals false. We know X equals three and Y is still equal to four. When we get down to the second uh, uh, series of if and else statements, we have if x is less than y, so x is uh, 3, so is 3 less than 4, that's a true statement. So we jump in here, we have another if statement inside this brace, if, let's see, 4 mod 3 is greater than or equal to three. Well, four minus three is one. The remainder is one. So one is not greater than or equal to three. So this statement is false. So this does not happen. Uh, this else statement, X plus equals uh, Y, that does happen. And so, let's see x plus equals y so we're going to add uh x and y so we're gonna do x we're gonna do three plus four which replaces x and updates that value so we get three plus four which is now x which is seven so at, at the end of this code is asking um what's the value of a b and x so we know a should be false 
I'm sorry, A should be true, B should be false, and X should update to seven. So that is going to give us option C as our correct answer. A is true, B is false, and X should equal seven. For number 21, it's a pretty straightforward question. And A is equal to 10, and B is equal to five times two, which also equals 10. So system.out.print, uh, A, and this is a logical test. Is A equal to B? Well, is 10 equal to 10? And the answer is, this is true. So all we expect this to print is true. All we expect it to print is true. It would only print, uh, it won't, it would only print 10 equals 10 if we had A and then we had, this would have to be A plus uh, B. That's how we would get this statement. We'd have to make a string where we had this. Um, a and B just aren't really possible given this notation. And uh, E um, is false, so it can't happen. And so finally, for number 22, a school that does not have air conditioning has published a policy to close school when the outside temperature reaches or exceeds. This is important, reaches or exceeds. So that's going to be greater than or equal to 95. Uh, the following code segment is intended to print a message indicating whether or not the school is open based on the temperature. Assume that the variable degrees has been properly declared and initialized with the outside temperature. So which of the following initializations for degrees, if any, will demonstrate that the code segment may not work as intended? So anytime we see these options, let's go through all of them to see what happens. So... If the temperature is 90 degrees, 90 won't trigger this condition. Um, 90 isn't greater than 95, so this doesn't happen. And so it will just say school is open. 94 degrees, not greater than 95, so it'll say school is open. 95 degrees, this won't happen, so it'll print the school is open. Now remember, the school wants to close when the temperature reaches or exceeds 95. So 95 counts as being as reaching 95 without exceeding. So option C is the answer that makes this not work as intended. And that's generally going to be the case for lots of if and else statements. The value that you actually use as a separator tends to act as the one that um, causes your code to do something that you don't want. If we look at the temperature of 96, if the temperature is 96, nine, well, if degrees is 96, 96 is greater than 95. And according to the condition the school has, you want school to close. And so that's what will actually happen. And this else statement then won't be triggered. So again, the answer is C because there is no case for if the temperature is exactly 95. To fix this, you could just put an equal bar and that would change everything. So in class tomorrow, we will, uh, actually that was number 23, uh, my bad. Let's get to number 23. So the price per box of ink pens advertised in an office supply catalog is based on the number of boxes ordered. The following table shows the pricing. The following incomplete method is intended to return the total cost in order based on the value of the parameter number of boxes or non-boxes. Uh, which of the following code segments can be used to replace missing code so that the method get cost will work as intended? So essentially what we want is if the number of boxes is one is between one and four, essentially, because we don't include five. So we're going to say here is one to four. This is five to nine and this is 10 or well, it already says 10 or more. So for one to four boxes, charge five. For five to nine boxes, charge three. And for 10 or more boxes, charge $1.50 each. So let's see. If the number of boxes are greater than or equal to 10, total cost equals number of boxes times 150. 
Uh, that seems to, well, right now, so far, so good. So then if the number of boxes is greater than or equal to five, total cost equals number of boxes times three. If the number of boxes is greater than zero, total cost is equal to the number of boxes times five. The problem with this code is that say I pass it a value of, uh, say num boxes equals uh, 11. So because we don't have any if statements, each one of these else statements actually gets checked. So 11 is greater than or equal to 10. So it's gonna take the number, it's gonna take the total cost and make it equal to the number of boxes times 150. And then it's going to take uh, whatever total cost is and make it equal to the number of boxes times three. And then because 11 is greater than zero, it's going to do total cost equals the number of boxes times five. And so this first code does not work as intended. We need some else if statements, like if, else if, and then else, find, well, just an else statement, really. So number two actually functions as number one was supposed to function. Um, if the number of boxes is greater than or equal to 10, multiply by 150, if the number of boxes, or if that if this condition fails, now try this one, where the number of boxes is greater than or equal to five, and multiply that by three. And if this statement fails, then do this. So if we still pass the number of boxes as 11, if this first condition, 11 meets this first condition, so only this happens. If we pass to the number of boxes like seven, this condition isn't triggered, this one is, and so then it multiplies the value by three, so we'd have 21. Or if we pass it something like four, then it would just do four times five, which is 20. The second code does work as intended. For the third option, we have the number of boxes. If the number of boxes is greater than zero, the total number, uh, do total cost is number of boxes times five. Uh, else if five or greater, multiply by three else if um greater than 10 multiply by 150. let's see it so imagine we pass this um a value such as six or nine uh no actually 10 is going to be the one that makes this uh fail so if we have num boxes equal 10. So if non boxes equals 10, actually we could use five too. Uh, all of these conditions, the first condition would be met for anything that exceeds, um, this will only work properly for the number of boxes between one and four. Anything else will, would cause this first condition to trigger and nothing else uh would trigger so like if we had number of boxes equal to so we can just go through this case by case so let's pick a box that's in each of these ranges so because we have one to four five to nine and ten or greater imagine we pick a number of boxes between one and four let's go with four so because four is greater than zero this will execute that won't execute and that won't execute so it seems like for one to four, that works. But if I give you a value between five and nine, such as five, well, five is greater than zero. So this code would trigger, even though we don't want it to. So uh, because this triggers, this else if condition won't matter. Now, actually it wouldn't, as long as we don't overwrite this value, it would actually be fine if this was just if and if because the final, this, this if would catch that. Um, the problem is that this else if condition won't trigger because five fits this criteria. So just because of that, three doesn't work. But then if you pass it a value such as 10, 10 is greater than zero. So this first if statement happens, but the else ifs don't happen when we actually only want the third one to happen. So the answer to this is one doesn't work and three doesn't work. So that's going to make um, B the only proper answer. So 24 and 25 are ambitious free response questions. 
Um, on your test, there's a much simpler um, if else statement uh, free response problem that I have for you. These are more sophisticated in that they use um, some conditions that we not yet gone over. So uh, we'll just have simpler things in class.